Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Surviving Adulthood if it is your first time here. Today's video is all about your first heartbreak. I'm going to talk about my own personal experience with heartbreak and then I'll also give um, some some tactics that I've used going through a breakup to help make me feel better a little bit faster. If you're interested in seeing that, then make sure that you stick around for the rest of this video. At the end of it, if you've enjoyed it, make sure you press the thumbs up button indicating that you liked it. And of course, make sure to subscribe and help me to grow my channel. Um, the goal of this channel is to just be a space where people can come together and share different experiences of things that happens with them throughout their 20s to help maybe the next generation or even just the next person um, go through all of so all of the adulting um, process easier. Anyways, let's uh, let's stop mumbling around and go straight into this video. So, my first heartbreak. So my first heartbreak. I'm gonna put a like air quotations around it because. It's not, it wasn't the real, it wasn't the real thing yet. But in high school, I had a crush on this little nerdy boy, this little light-skinned nerdy boy, who is so opposite of what I'm into now. But I had a crush on him, he was my friend. Um, we used to be on the phone all the time, so in my head it was like, okay, well, duh, he likes me. Like, why would he like me? I'm amazing, I'm funny, like, whatever. So I really thought that he liked me. Um, I went through months just like being his friend and hinting in my head I was hinting that I liked him maybe to him he didn't even realize it because he was low-key cool like he was smart as far as book smart but in life he was kind of like a little clueless so anyways one day I feel like it was a Friday night or a Thursday night I don't remember but I just remember one night we're on the phone together and he starts so talking to me about some other girl how he likes this girl and all this stuff and in my head I'm just like is he serious right now like hasn't he been getting my mental um my mental signals that I like him how dare he be on the phone with me talking about another girl and to top it off this other girl okay she wasn't even all that <laughs> nah it's not even she was pretty like and she had a lot going going for her too like she she was an awesome girl, but it was just like, I just felt so hurt. And I feel like part of my hurt also came into the fact that she was light-skinned. And all of my life, I've, I had this internal conflict with light-skinned girls because in my childhood, a lot of adults around me unknowingly were telling me that being light-skinned was better than being dark-skinned and that if you were light-skinned, uh, lighter complexion you are automatically more beautiful you know they weren't doing it on purpose but it was just like little hints that as a dark-skinned girl when you're a kid that you hear maybe not now anymore because being dark-skinned is now being more celebrated but definitely when I was younger you know I kept getting the vibe that oh my lighter skinned cousin you feel like they're prettier because they're light skin. Like you're praising them because of their skin complexion. You're telling me to stay out the sun. Obviously, being dark skin is a bad thing. Anyways, I internalized all these things. So when I finally had my big first crush, like my big, I would say adult, but I was still, you know, not adult. My first teenage crush, you know, and for him to go and like a light skin girl, I was just like, oh my god. Like it was just, I don't know, but. I took it so hard. I was on the phone with him when he told me. I was acting like I was okay, but as soon as we got off the phone, I was crying and I was just sad. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's that he he felt like something was wrong or whatever. I don't know what happened, but I just know that he called me back. And when he called me back, I was trying like I was trying so hard not for him to understand that I was crying, but I also wanted him to notice that I was crying and like be apologetic and be like, oh, I didn't, the only reason I like her is because I didn't know you liked me. I wanted it to be that type of thing, but it wasn't. He just, he didn't like me. He liked her, he wanted to be with her, and I was just like sad about it. And now looking back, I, I don't think I was so so much sad about the situation or about him not liking me as much as it was just a bruise to my ego that like oh my gosh like all this all these years I I've, I've been thinking 
that you know if you're lighter you're more like preferred it's actually true because here I am a dark skin girl I have I'm amazing I'm smart I'm intelligent I'm funny like and he's liking this other girl who in my eyes is like a great person but she was in me so but in a few like days I was completely over it that's how I know I wasn't sad about him I was sad about you know my ego was just bruised so now my first real heartbreak all right so a couple of years it wasn't a couple of years yeah maybe like a year and a half or two years after that situation I met this other guy and I'm gonna try to be as like vague as possible for people not to know who I'm talking about but if you were in my life in high school if you were in my life now if you're close to me you already know who I'm talking about so whatever so I met this other guy in school and I remember the first day like I saw this kid I was trying so hard not for him to know that I liked him because he was just everything that I liked he was like big and muscular and dark skin and I was just like oh my god like he's so cute but in my mind I was like no like I don't like being the person who likes the guy first I want the guy to make the move so I was trying so hard for him to realize like I don't like you so this was doing dang yo I feel like I can't tell the, I can't tell the story without telling the story I want to be vague but y'all gonna know who I'm talking about anyway so I might as well be honest so in high school I did theater so I was uh, you know into drama and plays and singing and musicals and all that jazz so that's how we met he came into the rehearsal my director asked me to show him the pictures of um, the show that we just did which was dream girls so I want to show him like when he walked in the room the other girls that were in the room were just like ooh, ooh, like making it so obvious that they found him attractive so I was just you know I was I had to make sure that he did not, you know, he knew that I wasn't a part of that and that I could get any guy I wanted and whatever. Like, he doesn't phase me. So I went, I showed him the pictures real quick and then he had to leave. And I was like, okay, well, he's never going to come back here. Like, he just didn't fit into the circle. I mean, I didn't really fit into the circle when you at first looked at me too, but him, he completely didn't fit. Like, he looked like he was a football player. He looked like he got lost. He was trying to find a football team, and he ended up in the room, and I was just like, okay, we're never gonna see him again. So this was a Wednesday. Yeah, I feel like it was a Wednesday. So Thursday goes by. I think there's like no rehearsal, whatever the case is. Friday we have rehearsal, and he's back. I'm like, what is he doing here? Like, why is he still here? But I decided, I don't know, I just had a completely different mindset the sec the second time of me seeing him. So that Friday he came. I can't remember like what the initial interaction was, but all I know is like, you know, near the ending of rehearsal, we're like joking around as if we've known each other forever. We're cracking jokes at each other so much so that our director had to separate us. And then, um... He walked me, like, he was new to the area, but he walked me to the train station because I had an internship to get to. Mind you, like, on any other day, I would have been left. Like, I wouldn't have even stayed for rehearsal because I knew I had to get to my internship. But he was just, like, we was just vibing, so I stayed a little longer. I ended up missing my, my internship for that entire day, actually. But he walked me that day. We went to, um, he walked me to Eastern Parkway to get on the 4 train. Um, and we sat on a bench, we're talking, mind you, this is our first time ever hanging out together, ever, whatever, I had a burger in my nose, this brother went in my nose and picked up my booger, and I was just like, is this love, is this love, is this love, that I'm feeling, like, I was just like, shocked, but also I was just like, oh wow, like, this is about to be something. So, we spent like the next couple of days just chatting on AIM and stuff like that. I had a bad habit of like, when I was younger, instead of just giving somebody my number, I would give them my AIM for them to contact me through AIM before I actually gave them my number. So, we were talking to each other on AIM. I lied to him. I told him I had a kid. I don't know why. I think I just wanted to see what his reaction was. 
Um, so I told him I had a kid. We're talking on AIM. Finally, we started talking on the phone. And when we get on the phone, we don't get off the phone. We just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So, um, to make a long story short, everything was like amazing. I ended up being stupid and my friend convinced me to get back with my ex and I listened to him. So me and this new kid that I was like completely just obsessed with, we, I broke up with him so that way I can like get back with my ex, which I never ended up doing. I never went back to my ex. But um, yeah, like we just stopped talking and then this is a long story. So I'm gonna try to just fast forward it because I just wanna get to the, the I just wanna get to the part of the video where I just basically, you know, give you some advice if you're going through some heartbreak. So whatever, a whole bunch of crap happened. He started dating this other girl. When he started dating this other girl, then of course, don't judge me, I was young. Um, of course, I got jealous and I was just like, yo, you know, I made a mistake. We need to get back together. And he was just like, oh, I don't know if I can trust you anymore and all this stuff. And then it just became a thing where he would have his cake and he was eat eating it too. Don't judge me, but basically that's how it ended up being. Like, I knew he had a girlfriend, but he would still be on the phone with me talking all night and all this stuff. And that went on for a long time and I remember just like the heartbreak part the heartbreak happened over and over and over again because it would just be a thing where it's like well if we're having such a good time together why are you still with her if you're complaining about her why are you still with her why are you just not gonna break up with her and be with me and it just would be a thing where it's like oh I'm going to and then it doesn't happen I'm going to so that heartbreak was just consistent and then um Eventually, he started dating this girl who was hanging around the same circle that I was hanging out in. And just having to be, like, to see it face to face, see him be with another person. And then on top of that, she did not like me. Um, so, it was a thing where it's like, oh, well, when she's around, I have to make sure that you know that she knows that I don't like you anymore. So, it was just hurtful. Like, I used to, bruh. I used to cry so much over this kid. I used to be in bed, like, my worst fear was like waking up in the middle of the night because I knew when I wake up, woke up in the middle of the night, I would not be able to go back to sleep. Like, I just had this hollow feeling in my stomach and in my heart and I was just so sad. And you know like that whole thing, like, when you're so heartbroken, you can't eat, you can't sleep. It's real, like, I mean, I could eat. <laughs> I actually was eating more because I was stressed about the situation, but as far as sleeping, I couldn't. Like, oh my gosh. When I, when I finally started like getting over the heartbreak and was able to sleep like an entire night, I used to be so grateful because I don't know, for a long, for a long time, I do know, I don't know why I said I don't know, but for a long time, it was just like, I would wake up I would go to sleep, wake up in the middle of the night, and I couldn't go back to sleep because I was so sad. Like, I just would cry and cry and cry and cry. And then, um, you know, that circle that I was talking about, that was the drama club, the theater group. And theater and drama was like my first love. And because he started bringing her around that, that you know, circle, I couldn't even be in that atmosphere anymore. I was just so sad and just like, it made me so angry and I was so like rude I mean in the beginning I had no reason not to like the girl but because of how I was feeling automatically like I had an attitude towards her and I just wasn't myself I wasn't happy I was just miserable I didn't want to be anywhere near theater because it just reminded me of the whole situation there's certain songs I couldn't listen to without feeling that hurt all over again and it just hurt so badly. So basically that's, I guess, my heartbreak stories. Um, I mean, the way that it ended is that we stopped talking for, a, we stopped talking for a while. He would come in and out of my life. Um, but the, the longest time we stopped talking was like a year. 
and in that year I was able to just get so much better and to understand like you know indecision is a decision the fact that he couldn't make the decision to be with me was him making a decision and by not deciding to be with me he decided to be with her so I just needed to get with that program and understand that and not feel like it has anything to do with me or anything like that it's just that that's his choice and that I needed to move on or whatever but it took a long time to get to this to get to that point um, I started talking to him when I was like 16 it wasn't until I was like 19 20 that I got to the point where I was just like you know what you can't make the decision let me make the decision for you we're not gonna be together so all right now let's get to the advice part because that was a long story now if you made it all um, the way to the end thank you so much for watching you are the real MVP so in the essence of time I'm gonna make this a two-part video because we're already at 16 minutes and we're only at the story so stay tuned for part two which is going to be my five tips for getting over a breakup now before you leave I have so many other videos on my channel so make sure to check those out and I will see you next time right here on this channel bye